Welcome back you guys, this is Mark with NC Engravers and today we are going to be working on a PSA dagger. Now, uh, this is the first one that we've had in hand and mostly that's because we've been turning down people left and right on work. And what I mean by that is, until we have one of these in hand, I'm not 100% sure what the differences are between a Glock slide and the PSA dagger slide. Now, certainly we do have some differences between the two different models and they, I mean, obviously they look different, but we also have some hurdles on the slide that we have to work around. I wanna to talk to you guys a little bit about that. I also wanna go through the work that we're gonna be performing. We're gonna show that work. We're gonna come back and obviously we're gonna discuss that and I can give you guys my overall opinion. Now, first and foremost, a couple of the things that you're gonna notice different about a PSA dagger slide versus the Glock slide is they're not blocky, okay? So they're not just straight up square-like. They do have this odd chamfered edge down through here. That's gonna cause a little bit of issues as far as doing patterns. Now, I wanna first start by saying there's two different ways you can cut a slide, okay? And you pretty much, all patterns pretty much fall into one or the other. So basically, first is, we're gonna just remove things like front serrations, side pockets, text. Um, those, you know, we're just gonna cut those off the slide and we're gonna do our own thing. Okay, so that's option number one. Option number two is we're gonna do a pattern to work around existing features of the slide to enhance them. Okay, so obviously uh, option number two takes a little bit more work, it's a little bit more advanced. You guys have seen this not only from us, but you've seen it from other companies that are out there offering services. And that is we're not just gonna cut through things to remove things, but yet we're gonna add patterns to the existing design. So that's kinda of gonna be what we're gonna be doing here today. So uh, back to those details. So front serrations, a little bit of a pocket here. Of course, this side has a weight reduction pocket, front serrations, odd chamfered edge. We've got a, a unique nose style here where we've got one little facet here, another little one here. Um, so it's kinda of, kind of a little bit different than a Glock. Of course, on a Glock, we've got text to work around. We don't have any text to work around here. So going back and forth between the two designs, not everything you see us offer on a Glock is gonna work on a dagger, okay? So patterns are gonna have to be specifically designed for this slide if they're gonna look correct. On this uh, design tonight that we're gonna be working on, we're gonna be doing the Raptor cuts. Now you guys have seen this a bunch of times on our Glock. They start from the front, they go to the back, they're the same depth, they go all the way down through there. On a Glock, they don't hit the text. A lot of times we see window cuts also in addition to those Raptor cuts. We're gonna be doing that a little bit different here tonight. It's gonna be more of a design closer to a SIG style slide where because we have this chamfered edge, which is thinner here, wider here, we're gonna be going with a deeper Raptor cut, shallow, shallow, shallow. So we're gonna end up having four on each side, deeper to shallow. We do see that a lot, once again, also on the P10s and the P10Cs and Fs. So we happen to see that a lot on a, a couple different designs that are already out on the market. We want to incorporate that into the PSA dagger. <clears throat> we're also going to be doing a Cobra nose, but not the standard one that you see on the webpage. We're gonna be doing the new one. Now, if you're curious and you're just saying, I don't know what the new one is, that's the one that we offer on our FN model slide. So if you go and look at the 509s, you're gonna see it's a series of step downs. It's a very small actual window but it's a series of aggressive, aggressive front cuts that kind of give the front of the slide just a little bit more of a unique look. Um, that's gonna be a little bit more challenging because once again, we have a facet here and a facet here. We wanna make sure we cut down low enough to get through those so everything looks correctly. So we're gonna have to work through that a little bit. We're also going to be doing an optic cut in the back. We're gonna be keeping the iron uh, dovetail on the slide. So this uh, customer is gonna end up being running with suppressor sights to work in conjunction with the optic. Now, I think I was told when I talked to the local customer, these were the sites that came on the slide when they received it. I don't know if that's 100% the case with all of these. I don't know if they've got like a premium version of the dagger and a, and a regular, or if this is just what they ship with. Once again, this is the first one we've had in hand, so I don't know that. Um, what I can say is that I do know that these sites will not be tall enough to work with the optic. So if you happen to have one of these, this is, these are the sites you have in hand. These look like a True Glow site. I'm seeing where it says TG-H3 and TG-H3 on the front. So obviously they're true glows. The idea is that those will need to be replaced with suppressor sights if you're going with a, a full-size optic, the RMR, the 407C, the 507C, something like a 508T. Um, those are gonna need to be replaced with a taller set of sights in order to fully co-witness as they should. So I will probably try to throw it on there with the optic, with these sights to see what it looks like, but I'll tell you already, it's, it's really just not gonna be tall enough. 
We are going to be going back to a black type of coating. Right now there's some sort of a PVD coating on here. This individual basically has a new firearm in hand and we can already see some chips down through here. So we're obviously not getting the most durable finish from the manufacturer on the slides, which it's not uncommon. We see this a lot of times. Of course, it is a what I would call a budgeted friendly pistol. It's not a eight, nine, you know, thousand dollar, eleven hundred dollar pistol. So um, you know, it is expected that we're gonna see wear and tear rather quick versus some of the other ones that are out on the market. Guys, at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into the cut work. Let's get that turned out. We're gonna bring this back. Let's review it a little bit more, and I'm gonna give you a little bit more of my mindset and my thought pattern on it now that I've you know spent a little bit of time cutting it, spent a little more time going through it. And I'm gonna also discuss maybe some of the stuff that can still be done to the slide, other services that maybe we haven't done here today. All right, guys, let's take a look and see exactly how this came out. Now, one of the first things you're gonna notice is we had shown some extra work in there. That was some laser work. And then, of course, we had a different Cobra nose during the actual cut work. So, one of the things I wanna remind you is when we have one of these in hand for the very first time, we are always changing things to make it make more sense. And sometimes we run into hurdles and we gotta work around them. And that was one of the things that we had to do. So let's talk about that just briefly here and then we're going to jump into some parts and then I do have some concerns about this pistol as a whole um, that I would like to mention to you. So first we ended up going with the standard Cobra nose which is just our C style Cobra nose. This is the one that you would typically see on a on our Glock style pistols that we offer on the web page. We ended up doing that because these facets here on the front were just so far down. You can take a look at this right here. It's so low that when we would have normally done the cutout, which is, and I'll do this bigger with my hand, which is over and down, we would have done a step down like this, and then we move over and there's a shorter step down, and then we move a little bit closer to the nose and there's a cut through. We would have had to make that step down so deep in order to get down to this edge that we would have been cutting really, really far into the high side. So basically up into this side, we would have had to cut super deep in order to get that low to make that pattern actually flow correctly. I was just like, no, 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 we're not gonna do that. It just didn't make any sense at the time. Once we got into the machine, we queued it up, we started running, we started actually taking some measurements off that height difference. It was like, no, this, this is not a direction we wanna go. So we also ended up um, adding a logo onto the top of the slide. So that was one of the things that was kind of a last minute change. The customer was like, hey, can we do a logo on the top? We thought it'd be kind of cool. So we went ahead and did that. I'll I will include a couple of pictures of that. If you can kind of see it on here, it does have a texture fill on it. So even though the slide has been recoded, our version of black, this isn't Cerakote, it's something we use. Um, and it didn't really, uh, it wouldn't just really wouldn't stand out if we would have just gone with like a smooth bottom. So we want to make sure that we have some sort of a texture fill. Of course, we ended up doing the Raptor cuts deeper, more shallow. We ended up cutting them lower on the slide than what we typically would with the Glock, as we discussed in the beginning of the video. And then one of the things that I do want to show you, I took some pictures, is the iron sights. So I went back and did a little bit more research on the iron sights, and the ones that came on the pistol at the beginning of this video are what you would just call the traditional standard sights. Okay, so that is what they ship with. Um, the downside is that they really just are not tall enough. I've, I'll include a picture if I haven't shown it already, showing that they're kind of like an exact level with the optic and they're really just not tall enough. Um, this is what you're gonna wanna go with and if you're just curious of what these are, this is just basically a good old Ameriglow, which is the GL329. That means that they're night sights. So we'll just put this kind of stuff out of the way. That means that this the, the front and back are night sights. 
They do make a set of sights that are all black, which is the GL429, and they're just blacked out. So if you don't want to be chasing dots in the back and dots in the front and dots in the optic and you just want to go with the dot for the optic and no, no other night sights on the irons, then um, the GL429 is the one you're going to want to go with. Other options on the market are just good old standard Trijicon stuff. Basically anything that is considered to be a suppressor sight will work. Um, I consider this to be a lower third. As you can kind of see, we're, we're not getting a whole lot of height over the optic, so we are definitely hitting the bottom of the glass. We're not going to be able to pick it up in here um, as far as it goes. But I'll try to get some pictures, and we'll see what comes out of that. So that's kind of it as far as the build goes. I would recommend, once again, that you would replace the iron sights with something a little bit taller. They work just a little bit better. We are no doubt going to be able to see some nice barrel through the uh, top section. I want to assemble this with some parts I have here, and then I want you guys to closely pay attention to some of my concerns with this pistol if you're thinking about buying one or if you have one and you're thinking about having something done to one. Um, I work on a lot of different pistols, uh, different materials as far as finishes go, different metals as far as structure goes, and I want to give you some of those opinions. So um, let's first start by throwing a couple parts in this gun. Now keep in mind, this is what you would, this is one of our, just our demo barrels out of one of our other builds. And the idea is that this is a, typically what we would consider to be like a Gen 3 pistol, okay? Um, easy to tell, hoop on the front is a small hoop. Um, slide release is only one, not two, and then we have a round plunger. So those are kind of your indications right there that we're a Gen 3 um, pistol. So pretty attractive, I like that. You're able to see some red out through the sides. I, I chose this barrel mostly because I really wanted to show uh, the, the whole exposure. So it's kind of a little bit um, darker in here, so it's hard to see. I thought that would help us out. We're going to throw a spring in here. I have a Gen 3 frame, and we're going to put it on that just to kind of give you guys a full full view here. Once again, as you guys know, I'm working kind of behind the camera, so we'll see how that goes. Overall, I really like it. And of course, I have a extended mag here that we're going to pop in here, and this is Killer Innovations. So that's kind of it as a whole. Now I want to, um, before we jump into some of my concerns, if you, add, if you ended up having a, um, a, just a good old standard factory PSA um, frame, you could probably swap out some of the pieces. I don't know what's compatible right now, so don't ask me that. I don't, I don't know what triggers work, and I don't know any of those details. I'm sure that there's tons of YouTube videos on it, but stuff like pin, slide release, uh, takedown, all that stuff could probably be done in red as you'd see something similar to this. So this would obviously look nice if you had all the accent pieces in red. And this is just an example if you guys want to go with green or blue or, or you didn't want to do this at all. But if you just if you wanted to make some small changes but didn't want to have to go all out, this is maybe something that would be kind of cool. So this obviously was the original. This is a Gen 5. This is the original pistol that we uh, stole the parts from just, just to kind of finish that out. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about just my i'm gonna say my concerns that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing um but i want to talk to you guys a little bit more about my concerns of this slide first and foremost i want to jump right straight into the coding okay so at the beginning of the video we you could see us talk a little bit about the coding there were some chips down here of course it doesn't look like this this is this is our coding so it's just it, i'm going to be straight up honest with you i've coded an absolute ton of stuff with a ton of different products and this is one of the reasons why we use this version of a coating. It is so close to what would be like a uh, black nitride finish, and it's more durable than Cerakote. So it's honestly, this is this is the way to go as far as as far as an upgraded coating goes. And this is just our good old standard black that we have, um, guys. The coating on the slide from the factory was chipped down here in the bottom zone, and I got you know, of course, I got everything taken apart. I got it put in the CNC machine. I started cutting. <clears throat> and really it didn't I didn't dawn on me or didn't I didn't catch it until at the end we did an optic you know first and then I ended up doing the the raptor and I came back and did the cobra nose and then after that I I, I clean it you know everything gets sandblasted everything gets gets kind of um filed all these inside pieces here get filed um, which is one of the reasons why Cerakote's required or some sort of a coating is required and I noticed that a lot of the cut work had chips in it right so chips down around the edges here chips down around the hoops or these little loops down here. I mean, it was, in, there were really didn't see too many chips in the front here. A lot of chips, little, little chippage on the top here. And what I mean by chips is like, it was like, the, it was like the coating was cracking, but it wasn't the coating cracking. It was where we had cut the slide 
and it was actually chipping off of the area, okay? And of course, we're using different cutters here. We're using ball nose here. We're using eighth inch here. We're using uh, three sixteenths here. So we're using different cutters. This isn't like we had a bad cutter in the machine. It's not even like it was the machine. We used two different machines. And um, it was the slide itself. So I kind of just sat back and looked at it, reviewed it a little bit more. I've got some tools here to see things a little bit closer with. And really what it came down to was it's the slide, um, just the metal hardening service that they do on the slide itself is really where this was coming into play. Now let me give you an example of where we see this and, and why we see this in other places. We usually see this in Glock factory OEM barrels. Okay, so when you cut a barrel, cut a Glock barrel, if we're going to do a logo on the top, we're going to do a hive pattern or some knurling or something like this, we want to cut the factory engravings um, off the barrel and then we would we would do whatever you know whatever our pattern is and the idea is that it chips the glock barrels chip and really it's because the heat treat that they've done to the barrel has caused the metal to flake okay so it's such an aggressive um hardening stage in their process that once they've been somewhat pvd coated or black nitride coated or whatever coatings they put on them that coating has a tendency to not chip the slide, but the slide itself is chipping whenever you're removing the metal, okay? So a lot of people are looking at these slides, and I've seen a couple of reviews online going, oh man, they chip all the time, and they do this and they do that. The, the, there's positives and negatives to this, and I know we're getting off track of doing the work, and I know this is getting into a review, and I apologize about that, but I know some of you guys out there own these guns, and some of you guys out there are talking about owning these guns, and they want to know what can be done on these guns, and a lot of this conversation is what are as as a company what are we going to offer what are we going to continue to offer um i'm going to be straight up and honest about it it's a lot more work than what it's worth when you start cutting you know windows in the sides of slides and all of a sudden there's chips little tiny microscopic chips all the way around here and they're really not that bad but if you're if you're looking for something like a real clean look like right in here I mean, you're really going to have to spend some extra time to go through and make sure that that is correctly trimmed out and, and done appropriately. Otherwise, you're going to see it, okay? So if you do some colors, like you're doing something like a tungsten, you're doing bronze, you're doing stainless, you know, you're doing some of those metallic-based colors, you know, blue titanium, you're probably not going to see those little chips. But I'm just really picky about what it is I offer, okay? And if we're not going to be able to do it correctly um, and to the highest um marketed ability if you want to call it that then i'm not sure we're going to do it so with that being said hopefully that tells you a little bit more about me as a company and hopefully it tells you a little bit more about us as how we're explaining it as of right now we are going to continue to offer services on these slides i've worked through this before with the glock barrels i have a pretty good understanding of how to uh, circumvent this issue but the idea is that it does involve more time. And, and when it does involve more time, it can cost more to, to turn services out, okay? So those are the things that you have to look at. The other thing um, I want to tell you about that, which is the other side of that coin, is you're almost never going to probably crack the, one of these slides. Okay, so I know there's a lot of you guys out there. I see a lot of them already. People are taking the PSA dagger frames or throwing an aftermarket slide on it. They're like, whoa, look at this. I have a custom gun. I'm going to be honest with you. If I was going to get work done, and I'm not speaking for myself here, you, if we offer it, we offer it, or you could use another company. But if I was going to get work done, I would do work on the factory slide. Because, I mean, this thing is like crazy, super hard, you know, hardened when they created it. If you can find the company that wants to work on these, you should do it, and you should do it now. Because if they decide later that they're not going to do it, they turn up missing as a company, and they're like, hey, we're just totally not going to work on those anymore because they're not worth our time. You're going to want to be at the front of the line, you're going to want to get your stuff in now, and you're going to want to get it over with. Um... The other option is buying an aftermarket sliding, putting it on the frame. Unfortunately, I have seen numerous, and I, I will not name any, I have seen numerous slides come through the door that have been cracked. Okay, we're talking fire and pin holes that have blown out. We're talking about cracks over here on the side. We're talking about cracked on the chamfered edges. I get to see all this stuff because people say, can we fix it? Can we repair it? What are my options about it? You guys don't see it because a lot of the times they don't post it online or their name isn't big enough or they don't know how to use the correct tags and really nobody ever sees it. It actually scares me <laughs> when I'm walking through some of the gun shows and looking at it going, I would probably never buy one of those brand slides um, because I've seen so many that have cracked. The life expectancy of some of those products is much shorter than, say, a Glock slide. Okay, We don't hear of too many Glock slides cracking and shattering and blowing up, firing pinholes blowing out the sides or whatever. We don't, we don't hear about that, and they've been making them since, don't quote me, but late 80s, right? 86, 7, 8, 9, somewhere in there. 
um, and of course they've refined the product over over time. With that being said, if you do want to have work done to your pistol, I believe that we'll probably offer some services on this pistol and until we've really refined the process of the correct cutters to use and the correct step over to use to kind of mitigate the chippage. Um, we will probably offer very few services until we get past that. Also, with that being said, if you've got your buddy who works with you and he's a machinist in the back room and he says, man, I'll take your pistol home and I'll cut it and I'll do my thing, I would highly advise you don't. Because you're probably going to find out that the cut work looks fine, but every one of these little areas is all chipped out. And we might, probably not going to be able to see it because I just, I'm so picky about what I do, so I've already cleaned them all up. Um, but if you didn't know that and you got it back, it's going to look like a busted turd because that's what's going to happen. And, and it, it already happened to me, and I, I work on guns every day. The only difference is, is do you know how to correct your problems or don't you? And are you a person that takes responsibility or are you the guy that just gives a slide back and says, oh, well, sorry, it looks okay to me. So those are some differences. So, guys, those are one, a couple of things that I want to say. Um, as far as it goes for me, would I own one of these pistols? Yep. Would I probably modify one of these pistols? You bet. So these are all things that I would still do. I think it's a super nice pistol. I think they're aggressive. Um, I think I really do like the pattern. I could see us doing other services. I could probably see us doing a wave service on this. Um, I should say a ray service at the beginning, which is the ray is from left to right. I'm not sure we're gonna do the wave service just because there's so much more cuttage on the top. So I'm not sure about that one yet. Um, knurling is probably something that is doable. I do know we're gonna see some chippage, but we do cut the tops off and we do um, kind of trim them down before we do a, uh, some sort of a knurling pattern so I don't see that being that big of an issue obviously optic cuts can be done um, but those are that's kind of the, the overall gist of it I would just I and I'm not trying to discourage you I'm not trying to encourage you to use us I'm literally just trying to put all the facts out on paper and let you make an educated decision and that is if you own one of these guns and you bought it at a competitive pricing um, rate versus some of the other guns that are out there by the time you buy one of these for three, three and a half, four, you pull that slide off, you know, you take the slide off and you're like, hey, I'm going to go and replace this guy here. You're kind of getting back up into that five, six hundred dollar range. Why didn't you just buy a P80 frame or an aftermarket frame of some other brand and just buy a slide, right? If you're going to own this pistol and you're going to want to have work done on this model, um, I wouldn't replace the parts. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not against barrels, I'm not against irons, I'm not against, you know, an optic, but honestly, I would probably do the work on the pistol you bought. And I'm telling you already, I've got tools, old tools, laugh at me if you want, from probably the 80s or 90s, this old Craftsman stuff, that has never cracked yet. I've cracked SK, I've cracked Mac, I've cracked, if you've, if you've had a tool and seen it, I've probably broke one. Um, but I've got some of this old, old tool stuff that's been super hardened, right? And the, that stuff lasts longer than the rest, right? Find me a picture of a Glock barrel that's blown up. Find me one, right? Maybe a squib, maybe some sort of aftermarket round that was put through it and it blew up, but under normal conditions, less than 50,000 rounds, I doubt it. Um, and that's because they're, you know, they're all the extra pressure that goes into it, all the extra time that goes into the making of that barrel to heat treat it correctly. I don't care about coatings. I care about heat treating, right? And that's what we usually see on aftermarket slides. Is he, the heat treating doesn't exist on aftermarket slides most of the time. It's a stainless slide. They're super, super soft that you might as well cut them like butter. Um, and then you get into after, you know, you get into factory slides and they're super hard. So guys, hopefully this has been educational to you. Um, in my personal opinion, I think PSA has gone above and beyond on the manufacturing of the slide itself, especially in the heat treat process. The coating, nah, not so much. I'm not a real big fan of the coating that they have. Um, I would probably, if I wasn't gonna do anything with one and just wanted to keep it, I'd probably have us do a black nitride finish on it, which is very similar to this, and then you're not gonna see that chippage. Black nitride doesn't chip. Um, PVD-based coatings chip because they're done in a different pro process, but black nitride doesn't actually chip chip. It just wears. So you've got some options. Feel free to send us an email. If you're like, hey man, I got one of these slides. I just, I want it to be a longevity gun. I want, to, I want it to be a truck gun. I want to know what I can do with this gun. Um, we're going to give you some options on what the cut work is. We're going to give you some options on what the coloring is. And we're going to try to help you get to where you want to be. Um, but yeah, feel free to reach out to us on that. Instagram and Facebook is obviously the place to be. We are going to try to start doing more videos on uh, YouTube. We've got probably five or six builds here right now that are all YouTube builds. Okay, so we have to slowly work our way through them. 
Um, but one of the things that I can say is we do have some other stuff just kind of kind of getting in the lineup, so to speak. Um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. I do like the build overall. I think it's a really cool one. And if you guys want to have something like this done to yours, maybe uh, reach out to us, see what your other options are, because we're always changing things. And um, we'll see what we can do for you.